What the heck is going on? No way. They're doing the shark tank. Guys! Yeah. They're pouring cement for the shark tank. The shark oh, tank. wow. Yeah, isn't that great? Uh, great timing. Dude, that's it's awesome. great timing. Dude. Too bad we don't have the snake things in yet, you know? Oh. I'm so excited to see this. This is what I've been waiting for for quite some time. And look at this. They actually have quite a bit going on right now. I tell you, these guys don't mess around. They are on it. And basically what it is is they obviously have a vapor barrier that you want to put down so that there's nothing that seeps up, right? And then the next thing they do is they actually put the rebar in that steel that reinforces that cement, So right? basically what ends up happening is hide into the existing flooring like this. And then they pour over the top of that. That's an important part because if you don't have that steel, you're going to have shifting, right? So it's really important. They're making really quick work of this. The next step is actually pouring. And remember, this shark tank is going to be about 200,000 pounds when it's filled up with water. So obviously they have to put down the brick to make sure that the rebar doesn't go down further. Then they put the rebar that is actually attached to the existing floor so we don't have this kind of thing happening with settling. And then ultimately once all of that steel is in, then they actually pour the actual cement down. And that's when uh, you get the floor, I guess. And by the way, I did call an audible on this and it saved me about $10,000. I talked to Steve Bashy last night about the floor and he made it very clear that it has to be level. But it looks just a little bit off to me if this isn't level and we put the shark tank on there and it's just a little off it could be a major major problem so to me it looks a little off but i'm going to go ask him if we can find out if we can pour this completely level yeah the floor is not going to be it's supposed to be level but it's just going to be as good as they poured it you know these big pours it's probably pretty close okay good. i could put a laser on it and check it but it's not really going to change anything but at least you'll know that'd be awesome yeah no problem cement or concrete Concrete. Concrete. Cement's the powder inside the concrete. Gotcha. I oh. Was, I was concrete, off. cement, water, and stone. Gotcha. There you go. There you go. All right, I good. love it. It's not cement. It's concrete. I know you guys commented down below all the time, like, Brian, I couldn't remember if it was cement or concrete. Now I know. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to pour flat first. You can't really pour the form for the stand for the shark tank until you have a flat surface, right? So first we pour flat, we let that cure, and then we're gonna pour a 30 inch pedestal of concrete where the shark tank was gonna go on. Well, we found out that that was gonna cost $41,000. About $10,000 for the flat pour, and about $31,000 for the pedestal. Well, my buddy Steve Bash was like, are you kidding me? $31,000 for that pedestal? We can probably do it with steel instead. And the fact is, is the steel is gonna be just as rigid as the cement. cement or concrete. Now I know. And it's going to only cost about $20,000. So it ends up costing us $11,000 less to not pour the concrete. The other thing that's nice, if we need to move things just a little tiny bit, we can do it with a steel stand. If it was concrete, we couldn't move it at all, right? We would be stuck where it is. It kind of gives us a dual edge thing. I've been talking to you guys about overages constantly. Well, today we saved $11,000. I guess these are the little baby common salmon turtles. We named them Bonnie and Clyde. Not only are turtles slow growers, but they're pretty slow at everything. Except this. Watch how fast he takes this. You want this? Oh, he's so quick. Oh, you dropped it. <laughs> it just swallows it, dude. Look, here comes Bonnie. Here you go, Clyde. Here you go, buddy. Boom. Dude, they're so cute. Boom. Watch, 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 watch. They'll take it. Unlike the gator snappers, how they just swallow their food whole. These little guys are notorious for ripping things into smaller pieces. I'm curious to see if he'll do it or he's just gonna keep swimming in it. Look how long his neck is, dude. It's crazy. Eat it. Oh, you missed. It's like feeding Tyson, but in water. Bam. There you go. Mr. Mata Mata's looking through the tanks like, oh, hello, I can eat those turtles. Not today, Mr. Mata Mata. It's not just the concrete to the shark tank that we need to get poured. We need to pour this too, which is the bridge tank. And then the cylinder tank for the jellies over here as well. But we have to actually do the filtration plumbing before we can pour the concrete. So I have to once again, figure out where the walls are and actually mark these so that we can put the plumbing in. Because you gotta remember, once that plumbing is set, you're not gonna be able to do anything. Once the concrete is over, basically it's there. We have the filtration off by just a few inches. Uh, the tanks aren't gonna fit. So it's very important to have this laid out perfectly well. Over the last few weeks, we've destroyed the floor and I have no idea where it's at. So I have to do some measurements mark them out. Steve's coming in this weekend is going to plumb it and then next week we can throw the concrete down. We can backfill and do the concrete for plumbing and everything and then the floors start to look a little bit better and we can start getting some finishes done. Wow dude this place looks way different. Look at this. The walls are all painted now. Look at this. Ooh, sensory overload. I haven't seen this one yet. We are scraping our, our, our knees, our knees and That's how we work in that time. But either way this tank rocks. Get it? 
And once we get all the concrete, we poured. can actually start grinding the floors, getting ready for epoxy. And once that's done, we can actually start bringing all the acrylic tanks. They're ready to come up and are ready to get set and start filtration getting to them. That's when the place is gonna start really looking good. And once all the exhibits in, reptiles and everything, that's when we come back and actually do the finished epoxy on the floor. So in order to mark these tanks, we have to realize that this is where the wall comes here, but somewhere around here, the wall actually switches from this side to this side. So I need to know where this wall goes and then it curves around here. Not only do I need that, but I need to know where this wall is, which is the glow room wall, which is right somewhere in this trench area, because I believe that we trench to the actual wall here, and I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen. So I need to know that wall in order to know this wall, because I need to know the distance between, because halfway through, we're gonna actually have the cylinder tank here. So I need that wall and that wall, but the problem is I don't know where that wall actually curves to get to this side, meaning there's no way I can do this. So we're gonna have to just put this off for a couple days. That's it, I'm just gonna wait. So they basically have all the rebar laid out like this, and they're just kind of tying it together right now, making sure that the bricks hold everything up so that they have the right strength for this pad, because this pad is so important. 200,000 pounds of weight is gonna be on this pad. And as soon as they get this done, then this concrete truck actually shows up. And I believe they're gonna do the same thing they did before with the hose. They just bring the hose and then fill it up and then level it up. But like I said, hopefully it's gonna be relatively level, because if it's not, it's gonna be a big problem. They painted it? So it looks really like granite nice. or something. Dude, that's sick. That is really cool. Imagine the little kids Whoa, that can do this. There's a tree. Is that that's all? Made, that's made out of a giant piece of PVC pipe. Shut up. Dude, that is so cool. This looks so good. This is water going to come here. out of here. We have a weeping wall here, and the color is going to match whatever the weeping wall stones are. You guys can go in the stingray tank. You want to go in the stingray tank? Yes. In it? Yes. All right, let's go. This is the texture that it'll be. There'll be some coral and stuff, but this is going to be painted black. <laughs> Nail file. Where'd the balls go? I saw that. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I see the showers aren't done yet, but that's okay. I still don't know how I feel about this. Oh my Shot God, dude. the ass off. Yeah, well, you'll be in the water if you're doing a little backstroke thing. Look at all this space for extra activity. Did you ever used to play dolphins when you were a kid? Yeah. Hey Mike, can you hear me? I can, can you hear me? I can hear the ocean. That's because we're in the ocean. Speaking of problems, I tell you, it's amazing how many things pop up that you just wouldn't think of before. You guys may know, you may not know, that it's deer season here in Michigan, which means that contractors and everyone else are deer hunting constantly. So, so unfortunately, that puts us behind because people aren't showing up because they're out hunting deer, uh, which is fine. I don't, I'm not against hunting. I don't personally hunt, but it's fine. But the fact is, is that the rough plumbing is basically done, but the inspector is out for the next 10 days deer hunting. So I'm going to try my best to see if we can somehow get an inspector in here because until we get an inspector in we here. We can't put the concrete over the top and if we can't put the concrete over the top we can't finish the floor. We can't do the wall. There's just so much learning. So we don't have 10 days to wait around or our inspector is out deer hunting. Hopefully I can pull some strings and get this place inspected so we can get some concrete poured. She doesn't do anything else but soak. You want to grab her out? What? You want to grab her out? Basically since we put Verde up here. She's a little bit spicier. It sounds like her uh, fountain is also out. Look how big she is getting. Now, a lot of you guys that have been following the channel for a while now, I'm so nervous now with her. Obviously, you guys have seen her, and she was not eating when Brian first got her. She would only eat live chicks, so she wouldn't eat for probably a couple months that she was hatched out or born because they're alive. I don't know where my brain's going. So because of that, she is growing slower than even Ivy's babies are. And now that she's eating everything in a bigger enclosure, she's growing like a weed. Yeah, actually, she's huge. She feels like she's 10 pounds now. Yeah, and even though like she's a little bit feistier now, we have a plethora of anacondas that you can handle here, so we're not too worried about it. So I guess they don't have the pump to actually pump the concrete in. They're actually gonna use this machine here where they actually fill this up and then go in. Now you're talking about, I think, 2,000 cubic feet of concrete that needs to go in there. So that is a lot of concrete that's gonna have to go in there and get poured. It's like old school, just a wheelbarrow, but at least an electric wheelbarrow, and that is crazy. 
so excited to get this done because hey, there's a gaping hole in my floor for the last three or four weeks. It's gonna be nice to be able to get around, move things around and start to see progress. Before you know, we'll have the metal stand. And by the way, I have some news. I just got off the phone with my buddy, Steve Bash here. If you remember a couple weeks ago, we said that our shark tank was lost at sea coming from Italy. Well, guess what? It just arrived at port. Now, I have no idea how long it's gonna take to clear custom, but it's on its way to Indiana here, hopefully within the next few days. And then they start to put it together in Indiana and then it comes here in two pieces and then they seam them together right here when the stand comes and is finished. I shouldn't step in it or put a handprint in it. You know, I did that one time and an old man pulled up on the side of the road and he started like calling us <laughs> was like chasing us. <laughs> It was so scary. So the concrete is all down, which is just amazing because again, we had this big chasm that we couldn't do anything. We couldn't get anything over here. Now that this is down, it's absolutely incredible. Again, we're gonna do a steel stand instead of a cement riser. It's gonna save us about $10,000. And quite frankly, the steel is gonna be probably a little bit stronger and it gives us the ability to move it around a little bit. If we need an inch or two one way or the other, we can move it over a little bit. Whereas if we were poured that concrete riser, it was set forever. There was nothing I could do. So now we're one step closer to getting the shark tank in if it ever shows up. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember- Oh, I'm just happy. <laughs>